The shifting patterns of hyperspace swirled outside the Greyshrike's bridge, a hypnotic spectacle that never failed to amaze or intimidate first-time viewers. Lakinda hardly noticed. With no shipboard duties currently vying for her attention, her full focus was on how Aralani's almost off-handed order was going to affect her life. On the surface, of course, there would be no effect. Her admiral had detached one of her ship captains from the attack force in order to contact her other ship captain. All perfectly proper, reasonable, and necessary. No one on Chila would blink twice over the order, or Lakinda's obedience to it. But that was on Chila. On Sirol, stronghold of the Zold Black family, it would be a different story. Honor and glory to the family. That was the Zodlak watchword these days. Not just a slogan, but the single most important goal for all who called themselves by the Zodlak name. And Lakinda had now failed twice in a row to earn that glory. She felt a knot in her stomach. The first blow had been their last skirmish with the Nikardun, where ultimately battle damage to the Greyshrike's thrusters had robbed her of her part in the final cleanup operation. That had left the Vigilant and Springhawk to gather those last bits of glory. Now she'd been taken out of the final, climactic battle against the remnants of General Yiv's forces in order to play messenger. To play messenger. Senior Captain? Lakinda shifted her eyes away from the hypnotic swirl. Her first officer, Mid-Captain Chaprostrobe, was standing beside her command chair, an uncertain expression on his face. What is it? I have the follow-up report on the thruster repairs, ma'am, Apros said, offering his questus. Did you want to look at it now or wait until later? Now's good, she said, taking the questus and skimming the report. The thrusters were still not up to full strength, but they were solidly functional. They've made good progress, she continued. Relay my compliments and have them keep at it. Yes, ma'am. Aprose hesitated. Ma'am? Something else, Mid-Captain? I was wondering if you could enlighten me as to what the Springhawk is doing way over in the Rapok system. I assume it's because of the Nicardoon presence Thrawn reported after his first incursion there. Lakinda said. Apparently, Rapak is included in the region our force was tasked to clear out. That would be reasonable, Apros agreed, a slight frown creasing his forehead. I'm mostly wondering why Aralani would send the Springhawk out there alone. Thrawn went toe-to-toe -to -toe with them once before, Lakinda reminded him. Even brought back one of their smaller warships for us to study. Which we all appreciated when we tangled with them over Primea. Apros said. My point is that the Vigilant's now about to go in alone against that final Nicardoon listening post. This just seems... unwise. Perhaps, Lakinda said. Or perhaps the Admiral's decided the single Chiss warship is enough to take on a group of desperate and badly organized Nicardoon. That wasn't the case at the last base, Apros pointed out darkly. It took all three of us there to finish them off. I suppose we'll just have to see, Lakinda said, keeping her voice neutral as she handed back the Questus. Springhawk and Vigilant are excellent ships, with superb officers and warriors. Whatever our Lani and Thrawn run into, I'm sure they'll be able to handle it. I hope so. Apros offered a small smile. It would be embarrassing to have beaten Yiv's main force at Primea, only to get kicked in the teeth by his dregs. Never happen, Lakinda said firmly. Carry on, Mid-Captain. Apros nodded and headed back to his station. Lakinda watched him go, the knot in her stomach tightening. That wasn't the case at the last base, he'd said. It took all three of us there to finish them off. That was how most of the officers and warriors in the task force probably saw it. It was almost certainly how Aralani's report would paint it. Only it wasn't true. Lakinda had run through the battle over and over again in her mind. She'd examined it from every angle, looked at every possibility, 
and had come to the unshakable conclusion that her heavy cruiser, all by itself, could have and would have defeated the enemy. It had been faster and easier with the Vigilant and Springhawk, true, but the fact remained that she and the Grey Shrike could have done it alone. But Arlani had never even considered that approach. Instead, she'd taken in all three ships, and as a result, the glory of the victory had been diffused and diminished. Worse, that single unlucky hit on the Grey Shrike's main thrusters had left her and the Zodlak family with even less than their proper third of the honor. It wasn't due to any ulterior motives on Aralani's part. Of that, Lakinda had no doubt. It was inconceivable that a flag officer would have deliberately skewed the battle results that way. Aralani had no family honor to satisfy no family alliances to defend, no family ambitions to promote. She had nothing to gain by siphoning off Zodlak honor to herself. Thrawn, though, was a different story. Often, connections among Chiss families were obscure and tangled. Not here. In this case, the lines of influence and motive were painfully clear. Fifty years ago, when the Zodlak had been one of the ten ruling families, their closest ally had been the Erezi family. After the Zodlak were demoted to merely one of the forty, the Erezi had still stood by them, though of course not as closely as they did with the allies who were still among the ruling families. But they were still on the side of the Zodlak, and the Erezi and Thrawn's myth family were bitter rivals. Anything Thrawn could do to keep the Zodlak down would also indirectly hurt the Arisi. What made it more disturbing was the fact that Aralani and Thrawn had a long history together, going all the way back to the Teharim Academy. It was unthinkable that a flag officer would show favoritism toward any one family or group of families. That was the whole idea behind stripping the higher ranks of their family connections but the undeniable fact remained that Thrawn seemed to get all the assignments that were heavy with potential honor. Unfortunately, there was no way to prove anything improper was going on. At least, not yet. <laughs> 